Hello guys, this video is about the Easter Vigil. It's a, a brief explanation about the, what are the uh, parts of the Vigil. So the Easter Vigil is mainly made of three parts. The first, excuse me, four parts. The first part is the exaltation of the light. And that's when we have the fire in the back, the blessing of the candle, and then the uh, procession in, of the candle into the church and lighting all the candles of the faithful. The second part is the uh, mystery, the unveiling the mystery of salvation. And that is where all the readings focus us on uh, the great promises that God has made to his people and fulfills those promises in the person of Jesus Christ. The third part is where we have the um, great exaltation of the power of the Holy Spirit still working within the church and bringing people closer and closer to the Eucharistic heart of Christ. So we begin with the baptisms, the blessing of the water, the baptisms, and then the confirmations. The fourth part is where everybody celebrates the Eucharist together, and that is kind of the shortest part. And so that's this mass kind of as usual once you get to that point. So I'm going to go a little step-by-step step through these parts and uh, use the sacramentary as, uh, as our guide. So the first thing was we had the blessing of the fire. And it, this, is, uh, this celebration has to be at night so the, you can see the darkness coming to light. And so we usually have this service at 8.30 uh, in the evening or sunset. Generally, we set it for 8.30. So make sure it's dark outside, and then we light the fire. As we light the fire, we bless the candle. And I'm going to ask you to kind of listen to the blessings of the candle. And a lot of peace, uh, people can't see this except for the servers who are serving for me at the Easter Vigil. So uh, what the um, priest does, he blesses the candle by taking his thumb, and he goes down a portion and he says Christ yesterday and today that's the that's the tree of the, the trunk of the, of the cross and then the arms of the cross he goes the beginning and the end and then he goes above it and he carves in the alpha which means the beginning and the omega that's the end that's like the a and the z of our alphabet all time belongs to him and then here is where we would write 2000 all time belongs to him Two, two, zero, and all ages, to him be glory and power. So that's 2,000, two, zero, two, zero, through every age forever. And then we have these uh, pins or with incense that we insert in five different points in the, in, in the cross. So these are this incense, that the, the five representing the five wounds of Christ. And they're incense, so they're like sweet aroma. Now they're cap encapsulated uh, with wax as we, we push these in. So as the priest puts the uh, incense in, he says, and each one receives this, by his holy and glorious wounds, may the Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. So that's where the we insert each one of those five wounds. And then remember what I said here about Good Friday when we uh, expose the cross. The priest starts in the back, then he goes to the middle, and then he goes to the front. Now I take the light at the same spot, the candle. It's the only light in the church. The fire gets extinguished. The only light in the church is that single flame. And so the priest says, Christ the light, all right? And the people say, thanks be to God. And then he brings it up, a key, and then an up another key as he progresses further. So the servers then will take that, from that single light, they'll light their little candles, and then they begin to light the candles in the people's in the pew. And then I move to the middle of the church, and I go one key up, and I go, Christ the light, thanks be to God. And then the servers light the front of the church and then the sides, the wings of the church. And then I get to the altar, 
Christ the light. Thanks be to God. And then I bring it over and place it into the um, holder for the Easter candle. And now, guys, I got I got to tell you what you're going to witness here with the bishop, and this is going to be at 5 p.m. on Saturday. You're going to be witnessing that Easter vigil with with the bishop. Their candle weighs 33 pounds. I was a deacon, 1994, celebrating the Easter vigil with the bishop. And you had to take that 33 pounds, you had to hold it up, Christ the light, right? And then, you, and then you walk to the middle. You had to hold 33 pounds out here like this. I was like, it's getting heavy. Christ the light. And then <laughs> and I had to hold it. I don't know. It took like at least 10, 15 minutes. It's like holding it out like that, 33 pounds. I said, I'm a wimp. That's heavy. Anyway, so we process in. And we process in with the candle. And then... Uh, we uh, go through the blessing of the candle and we sing what we call the exalted in front of the candle. And, um, and so I want to, I'm going to bear with me here. I'm going to go ahead and read the exalted because it's kind of cool because it takes in the old covenant and brings us to the new covenant. I'm not going to sing it for you. Praise God. <laughs> anyway, Exalt, let, it, let them exalt, the host of heaven, exalt. Let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud. Our mighty kings triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. Ablaze with light from her eternal king. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church, Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. So that's the introduction. And now I want to back up. And remember when I talked about the tritium fast? You haven't eaten since Holy Thursday night. All you're doing is drinking water or some liquids. I did juice. The only food you've eaten is the communion on Good Friday. And it tasted sweet. And now you're waiting and your remember I said your senses are becoming more acute. They're more sensitive. Your hearing, your sight, your smell. And so this Easter vigil, the whole play of light and darkness, light and darkness. Wow. Okay? I'm just gonna say it's pretty intense. And so then uh, the, the priest goes on or the deacon goes on. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. And then, so he asked the blessing of God on him. And then he has this dialogue with the people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal father and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feast of Passover in which is slain the lamb, the one true lamb, whose blood point anoints the doorposts of all believers. Remember what I said the other day? We don't, on the Passover, we don't put the blood of the lamb on doorposts or lentils of homes. It's on the doorposts within us. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that will, with a pillar of fire, banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world set Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace 
and joining them with the Holy Ones. So our voices and our celebration on this Easter Vigil night joins all the church. The church time past, the church present, the church future, the church glorious, the church suffering, and the church pilgrim or the church militant right here on earth. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O wonder of your humble care for us, O love, O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. I got to stop here for a second. St. Augustine, I think, it was the first to coin that phrase, O necessary sin of Adam. Because if Adam didn't sin, would we have the Redeemer? O happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which is written, the night shall be bright as day, dazzling in the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into fl many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. It is fed by melting wax drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. This is the beeswax in which the candle's made. But I love this line in there. A fire, a single flame, into many flames. A fire into many flames divided, yet that flame never dimmed by sharing of its light. So again, this is this is a symbol too of a Christian who has uh, becomes alive in the faith and shares the faith. Their faith is not dimmed; it only grows the brighter. But now the light around him continues to dispel the darkness. Oh, truly blessed night. When things of heaven are wed to those of earth and the divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may per preserve undi persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. And the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who, coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Wow. Okay. All right. So we move from this first part of the exaltation of the light. And... Um, and, and with that, we move into the unfolding of the mystery of salvation. So we're going to go from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And I'm obviously not going to read all that, so it would take forever. But um, in the liturgy that you're going to see with a bishop, uh, it's going to go through all the readings. And I'm just going to give you a synopsis. First of all, it goes through Genesis. Genesis 1, the creation of the world. The second reading is Genesis, where Abraham is put to the test. The third reading is Exodus, and this is where God calls from the burning bush, and he uh, asks Moses to go and set his people free. The fourth reading is from the prophet Isaiah, and this is where the prophet prophesies a coming redeemer, a holy one of Israel. Uh, the fifth reading, again, is from uh, the prophet Isaiah. And he says, all you who are thirsty, come to the fountain drink. 
eat, drink, live. Okay. The sixth reading is from the prophet Baruch. And here's where uh, Baruch challenges, the prophet challenges the people to follow the commandments of the Lord and to know the blessing that will come upon the people of Israel. Um, and with Jacob, that means Israel, receive her, walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Stay with Israel, stay with the covenant of God. The seventh reading is from Ezekiel. And this is where Ezekiel uh, challenges those that who were defiled by sin uh, that they can be restored and that we get a new spirit within us, a new bodies within us, that the Lord is going to transform us. And then this is where, this is where, the, because there's seven readings. And so the, all of a sudden the lights get turned on. The lights get turned on. Everybody was sitting in darkness and the only light in the church was the candle, the single Easter candle. Everything's red. That's why you see the lectures with flashlights, right? So now all of a sudden, we have the lights turn on and we have St. Paul to the Romans. Are you unaware, he says, that we who were baptized into Christ, with Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death so that just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. Okay. So then, then he had this, uh, alleluia, 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 this threefold alleluia, uh, and basically the Psalms are read there. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, right? And then the priest reads the gospel, has a short homily, and then that concludes the liturgy of the word. Now, I have the short story here. When in grad school... Um, I went to the Pontifical College Josephina. Now, the Pontifical College, there's only 15 um, Pontifical College seminaries in the world. 14 are in Italy. One in the United States. Pontifical means all of our staff and uh, administration is hired and fired by Rome. So we had many professors from all over the world. And they spoke, all of our classes were taught in English, praise God. But we had students from China, Burma, uh, Romania, Latvia, Hungary, Germany. I'm trying to think of some of my friends, you know. Uh, in Africa, we had uh, Ugandans and... Nigerians from South America. Oh my, South America. We had Colombia, uh, Brazil, uh, Peru. Then we had North America. We had Mexico and we had uh, uh, Canada, Canadians and of course Americans. And then, uh, well, yeah, and then we had, I mentioned we had Chinese and Vietnamese as well. But anyway, so with that all being said, Every year we did this, these readings, the readings would be in a different language. So we had seven different languages spoken. So you had a kind of, had enough light so you could read it in English. I always thought that was kind of weird. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so now we move to the third part. So the first part is the candle and the light. The second part is the liturgy of the word, the mystery of salvation, and the third part is the baptismal liturgy. So now we have the blessing of the water. I'm not going to read that whole thing, but it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, blessing uh, with the litany of the saints uh, for the baptized person to experience the litany. We call the church glorious to assist that person. The blessing of the water. And then we challenge the baptized to renounce their sin and make a profession of faith. Right. And so after they're baptized, we present them with a lighted candle, just like a baptismal candle, lit off the Easter candle, and their godparents will hold that. And then those to be confirmed, we ask them to 
step forward and they renew their baptismal uh, promises with the whole congregation. So in other words, there's a threefold rejection of Satan and the world and a threefold acceptance of God. Do you renounce Satan, all his works, all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Okay. So, and we, we do that at the Easter Mass as well. We'll touch on that. All right. So then, and then I say um, to the person to be confirmed, John Doe, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion with the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come forward with your sponsor in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord, the sign of the church's unity. So this person confirms this statement. And I say, John Doe, do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. I do. And then I say, John Doe, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. So those of you who are going to be confirmed, a big majority of you, are going to be confirmed, um, this is basically what you're going to do at confirmation. So then we uh, celebrate the sacrament of confirmation. Um, and then I, the priest is allowed to confirm only on one day without asking the bishop, only one day uh, of the year. And that's the Easter vigil. Uh, the other times I have to get permission and delegation from the bishop to confirm somebody. So with Holy Chrism, remember Holy Chrism is used in three sacraments, baptism, confirmation, holy orders. So with Holy Chrism, I say, be sealed, and I make a sign of the cross on their forehead, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the confirmante says, amen. Then I shake his hand and I say, peace be with you and with your spirit. So those, are the, those of you are, who are going to be confirmed, that's going to be your two things you've got to remember when the bishop confirms you. Okay. So that ends the third part, confirmation. And then we have the fourth part and final part, and that's the celebration of Eucharist. And that's basically mass as normal, except for we ask all the people that are involved in the liturgy uh, or in the confirmation or uh, confirmation, full communion and baptism, we have them bring up the gifts. And so um, that's the simple, easy part. And so that's kind of the Easter Vigil in a nutshell. And remember, that's going to be um, broadcast 5 o'clock from the cathedral on Holy Saturday. So 5 o'clock from the cathedral, Holy Saturday. It's going to be live streamed. So again, uh, uh, catch that and watch that movement. It's going to be beautiful. Going to be beautiful. God bless you.